Today's the day we're starting to put the material on the ceiling of the van. A little bit different sequence and a little bit different method than a lot of people. Come on along and let me show you how and why. Welcome to Van of Action, where we're taking a 2018 Dodge Promaster van and converting it to a family camper. Along the way, we're sharing the good, the bad, the ugly, and even a few pro tips. In this case, it's a good one. How to install a V-match tongue and groove ceiling to your van totally alone like a pro. Please subscribe if you find it useful. Ask us any questions you'd like to. Add a comment or a like at the end. Let's get started. It's time to start putting the ceiling on the van, the material on the ceiling. And what we're using is kiln dried, select grade, clear cedar. That's just the look that we want. And what that means is, clear means there's no knots. So I don't want any knots in the ceiling. I was able to buy lengths that are long enough to go from one end to the other so there'd be no joints in the ceiling. And it's select grade, which means it's good quality and kiln dried. Now, why would you want to kiln dry something? What's, what's the big deal about that? Well, there's two ways to dry lumber. One is air drying. That's when you just stack it up with some slats in between and let the air move around it. And slowly the moisture will come out of the wood if you're in a dry place. If you stack it up in a damp place, the wood will be damp forever. Once it's dried, that wood will take on moisture again if it's exposed to it. It'll start to swell, it'll shrink, it'll swell, it'll shrink, it might warp, it might twist a bit. When it's drying, it might twist a bit. The other way to do it is to kiln dry it, and that's when they put the wood in a sealed building and they heat up the air in the building. And in heating it, the wood fibers start to expand from each other and they suck the moisture out of it. It's a dry heat, they expand it up, the moisture leaves the wood, they, they suck the moisture out of the air in the building and then it cools down. And as it cools and the, and the, the wood fibers start to compress again, some kind of voodoo happens. I don't know exactly what it is, but the molecular structure of the wood changes in a very subtle way. And after that, if it's done properly, that wood will not take on moisture again. It won't swell in the dampness or shrink in the dryness. It'll stay stable. I know my van's going to be exposed to a lot of moisture, and I, I wanted to make sure that I had wood that was stable. Now, I'm sure there's some scientist out there that's going to tell me what I said was all wrong, but that's the basis of it. So this wood is going to give me the look that I want, and it's going to be stable for me, so it's going to stay the way I want it. I know that. Okay, that's the first part. I know that I want to have a beautiful piece of wood, and it's this one. I've picked it out. I want to have this piece of wood running right down the center of the van when it's finished, because that's where I want my light, centered in this piece of wood. So I have to make sure I plan it so that I end up with this piece of wood running right down the middle of the van. Takes a little bit of forethought. This is how I'm going to do it. Now every tradesman knows that the more times you measure, the more chances there are of making a mistake. So we try to measure just once. The whole job, if we can measure once, that's fantastic. In this case, the board covers five inches, but with the tongue, there's another quarter of an inch working there. So I made a storyboard, it's called. I took a clean stick, I measured and marked the outside of each board for the coverage, and then carried that down the length or width of the van. So I only measure once, I've got this story stick that's gonna tell me every time where each board is. But because I have to allow for the tongue, I've had to make a different notch because this is the line that I'll be working to when the time comes for me to actually put the boards up. A quarter of an inch off of where the board will actually be. It's important to do this, but you only have to do it once at the beginning. That's what's really critical. So then I just take my storyboard and move it up top to the ceiling boards, clamp it in place, and it shows me, I line it up with the center, and it shows me where the tongue is on every board. It's the little notch on the side, right? Because remember, this is upside down. When I was doing it on the, on the, the, looking at it with the board on the floor of the van, when I put it on the ceiling, it's actually upside down. That's why it's so important to make the storyboard up. Easy hack, easily done. And really, the only one I have to be concerned about is the very first board. I'm getting ready to start putting the boards on the ceiling. And these are 14 foot long boards. They've got to be straight. They've got to be in the right place. And it's a clumsy thing to do on your own. And these are delicate boards. Cedar's a soft wood. I've got to be careful with just that it doesn't get bruised. So let me show you the system I've made up. And we'll go from there. All I've done is put up... Well, let me start here. I showed you how I marked the center and then I marked where each board was going to go and then I snapped the line through. 
Now, I want to get this board up close to that line, and I have to do it without using any hands. So, I made up this jig out of some scrap plywood. It's an L-shaped piece of wood with a little block on top. It looks basically like this. And then, the heel was just a little bit thick for my clamps, so I cut a little bit out of the bottom just to make room for the clamp. And now that jig will just slide across on that tr that this lip as I move across the ceiling. Nothing to it. One on each end, it'll hold the board for me just fine. And I need it held like that because once it's up here, I may have to cut the ends. This end, along this end, is going to be something. I don't know exactly what, but it'll hide the, the end of this board, so that's fine. This end's fine. But as I walk along this beautiful piece of wood, isn't that sweet? When I get to the other end, you see, it's long. Somewhere in here, I have to make a straight cut right across the whole ceiling so that the headliner or whatever that piece is called, I took it out earlier, it's over there on the bench. When I put it back in, I'm going to trim it to butt up against this cut somehow. I'm not exactly certain how it's going to work until I get there, but I know right now I need these boards to all be cut off on a straight line. Now, let me tell you how I'm going to make that board straight, or that whole line straight. I've put a mark on this side wall where I want the boards to end, and that's arbitrary. All I know for sure right now is I want this board to be longer than the cover is coming out because this piece coming out, I want to trim it off to butt up against the, the back side of this cut so it looks nice and neat. So I've, I've made sure that this is longer than, than this. This will take the board long enough. And then I've made the same mark on this side. And now it's just a question of taking a straight piece of plywood, piece of scrap, something light, something flexible, lining it up with the cut on that end, with the mark on that end, and then coming to this end and lining it up with the mark over here and then just pushing it up to the ceiling. And that is going to be straight enough to give me a nice cut. Let me give you another angle at that and you can see here how easy it really is with those little brackets holding the board in place where it needs to go. I've got all the time in the world to check the far end and make sure it's in the right place at the right length. Come up to this end, be very careful, very meticulous, and make sure the cut is going to be on the line that I want it on. Get a couple of spare hands and life is pretty easy. Now, a little bit faster pace here, but the first piece is so critical. you got to make sure you pick a nice straight one. Make your life easy. Pick a good straight piece for the first one. Get your clamps up and your brackets up in place to hold it. Then very carefully make sure you place that first piece of wood exactly on the line you want to follow because every piece after it is going to get pushed up against that one. So you got to make sure it's in exactly the line you want and it's anchored really, really well. And with these brackets, it couldn't be easier to do. Make sure you get done, done it the way you want it done. And then what you do is just remove the clamps and get ready for the second piece. Let's take a look at the second piece. And this is pretty normal. These pieces are the same on both sides. So you have to pick when you're finishing them or when you're putting them up, which piece you want where. So we had a good joint at that end. See how it opens up here in the middle. If you walk it on, there's a good joint at this end. So this second board has a big wow in it that goes this way. Perfectly normal. You can't help it. Let me show you how to fix that. It would be nice if these boards were all perfectly straight, but that's never the case. They can bend either way, either from right to left or right to left. Sometimes a cup in the middle doesn't really matter. This particular board is, is, is uh, it's got a cup. Both ends are touching, but there's a big bow in the middle. And the way to fix that is Screw a block, just a scrap piece of wood beside the board, and then cut a wedge. Put the wedge in, and then just with a hammer, tap on the end. Sometimes you'll have to do that in more than one place. Here we're going to have to do that. 
You can see there's a bit of a, it still has opened up a little bit here. Drop my wedge, put the next piece in, another, another block and a wedge. Joint the whole length. Now we can just fix it there. And really, every piece is the same from that point forward. All you do is put your board up, mark it to length, hold it in place, use your wedges to straighten out whatever issue that particular board has, make sure you get a nice tight joint, and then fix it in place with the screws permanently. It couldn't be easier. The secret is to start off with a perfectly straight board and then have a system to hold that board for you up to the ceiling so you can maneuver it to the place you want it to be. It's up. Beautiful, clear cedar. No knots, no joints in the whole ceiling. I'm really happy with it.